Hello everyone, my name is John Gord, I'm the CEO of Cambridge Network. It's the 22nd of May today and this is the next in our series of discussions, fireside chats with leading business leaders in the Cambridge area. I'm delighted today to welcome David Cleveley. David is a serial entrepreneur of the background in telecoms, a very familiar face around Cambridge, and I'm pleased to say one of the co-founders of the Cambridge Network. So welcome David and thank you for your time. Thanks John, thanks for inviting me. David, it's, um, it's been a fairly brutal period over the last few months for businesses in the, in the country and globally. We've seen some areas, um, for example, hospitality and retail. I know you've had seen that face to face. Um, are there any areas within the Cambridge ecosystem which are perhaps surviving better than others or who may actually find this as an opportunity to increase their business? Well, uh, certainly anybody who's involved in um, biotech, particularly as it relates to COVID and those kinds of things, uh, I think are going to see a, a massive uptick in their business. There's a, there's a huge appetite for investing in those things. Um, secondly, there's those, those businesses that are involved in the kind of technology that's allowing us to do this. Um, if you're involved in telecoms, ICT, those kinds of things, um, you only need to look at Zoom share price, for example, um, to see to see how investors react to those things. So a lot of people are looking for opportunities to invest in companies or to back companies that will that will benefit. And those will be things that generally play to new ways of working, different kinds of productivity. Um, those the companies that obviously suffer um, or uh, which are you you alluded to are those that that are going to rely on people traveling, people getting together in large groups and so on. So that includes a lot of the retail trade, a lot of the uh, and restaurant high street stuff, um, cinemas and theaters and, and those kinds of things. Um, and then we've got the, the stuff that um, we need to talk about, even though it's maybe provided by the state, which is the stuff in, in education where um, we're going to need to be applying some of the lessons that are being learned in business to how you work online to education and I'm you know, talking from my position as chairman of Raspberry Pi, we have um, made enormous efforts over the last six weeks to pivot the entire business because we were educating groups of kids, um, 300,000 kids a week, um, not all in one group of course, uh, but across the world. But that, that, that we've had to change entirely. So there's, there, there is a, there's a lot of change going on. There are probably gonna be some major productivity improvements there are people who are structurally not going to do very well out of this and there's some people who structurally because of the way in which the business is either structured they can work from home they can be flexible or because of the nature of their business they're going to do very well indeed interesting and you know, as a serial entrepreneur what's happened to deal flow and valuations are they are they paused uh, no, it's, it's curious. Um, the, the, the same kind of triage process is going on. You know, you've got companies that, that, that will benefit, so they're doing rather better. Companies that are neutral, well, okay, so the, the prices are, are drip, dropped a bit, but, but not really much. And of course, they're the people who probably won't survive, in which case everybody's just running away uh, as fast as they can. Um, but the, um, uh, of course, there's a certain kind of initial as everybody tries to work out what's going on you get this softening in the market but because the good deals are always in slightly short supply that market tightens up pretty quickly um, and there's a lot of money around um, because interest rates are low um, people want to find places to put their money um, and and so I'm not sure I mean for, 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 for good companies um, this isn't necessarily much of an effect interesting Changing tax slightly, but still thinking about the COVID-19 challenges. A lot of the Cambridge success has been based upon collaboration between businesses, uh -huh. between businesses and the university. Could we be doing a better job of doing that now? Well, uh, uh, it's going to be different. Um, you know, uh, Cambridge Network, for example, has relied on these these meetings. Cambridge Angels, of which I'm, you know, founder of, is, is relied on meetings to to do these things, um, and. The, whilst we can substitute for some of that, um, so for example, Cambridge Angels has a self-help group, all the angels get together every, every once a week and deal with a topic and we have speakers and we're sharing information. And as a result, actually, I think we're being more effective as an organization uh, at that level. 
Um, the serendipity, which is my favorite word and is the thing that underpins my entire career, you know, bumping into people by chance and having conversations with them and so on. That is the issue that I think we're going to need to crack. I don't know how you do serendipity when the way you work is you arrange Zoom calls. It, I, th those two things aren't compatible. You need to have the chance encounter. Um, and the chance encounter doesn't happen in environments like that. That is the, that is that that's going to be a major problem for us. And, I, and that's one of the challenges we've been trying to wrestle with at, at the network. How do you how do you replicate face to face, as you say? Well, I have had, there's one. Um, I'm doing a, a, a series of workshops with the CTO of Ocado, um, and um, he's 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 organising these things extremely well. I'll give it an example. So he organizes a, a, a workshop, which is a plenary. So we're, we're all talking about a particular issue. And then he randomly assigns people to, group, people to groups with, question, with a question to answer. So you then have to deal with a group on Zoom, as if you were sitting around a table, obviously. Um, and you get to meet some interesting people like that. So that's, that's one way of doing serendipity. Just don't let anybody choose who they're going to sit next to. You, you, you do that by random. And that may be, may be um, quite a good way of doing things. You put, we, we, indulge, we indulge on these systems um, in, in random groups. Interesting. Interesting. Um, changing text slightly, the government interventions have been numerous coming along at different stages. From an apolitical perspective, how do you think they've worked in terms of keeping business afloat? Well, I mean, obviously, the, the original business loan scheme is that was a load of nonsense. Um, I remember hearing um, a baker on Radio 4 describing this as saying, uh, why would I borrow money when all I know is I'm going to lose money um, and I'll just have to spend a lot of time repaying it if I ever get to make any profit? Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be saddled with debt. I'm not going to take any debt on, so it doesn't help me. And I think that that's a very logical reaction from business and one that government wasn't necessarily expecting. I think it has this, this, this um, unfortunately, it, uh, it would be rather better if civil servants and politicians had rather more experience of business than they do, because I think they would understand that business is not actually just a simple money-making machine. Um, there's a lot of hard graft, and if you take a blow, you may find that you don't recover from it. And the last thing you want to do if you've had a blow and you think there's an increased risk to the business is further compound that risk by taking on extra, extra um, loans. Um, the, the furlough scheme, I think, is brilliant. It's absolutely perfect. It's, um, it's been saving a lot of businesses and keeping things going. We're going to have to wean off it, of course, um, and get back to... Uh, and as we wean off it, there will be casualties. Um, but nevertheless, I think that, that that's probably one of the best schemes that we could possibly have done. Um, the, the, the last thing that I just mentioned is the future fund. Um, and I think, again, the, the government has kind of miscalculated. Um, for those of you who don't know, the future fund is a 50% matching, up to 50% matching of the investors on the same terms with a convertible loan. They put an initial pot of 250 million. Within four hours, the uh, the, the applications are top 550 million pounds. Now, um, one of my companies was number 756 into that. Um, when I divide 756 into um, 250 million, I think I got about 300 thousand pounds. We were applying for. Um, let me see how much we we're applying for. A couple of million, I think. Um, so. Uh, there's definitely a mismatch between the size of the pot that the government has allocated for this and and what's what people want. Um, we need to see how that will that will pan out. I, I do hope the government takes some steps and puts some more money into the future fund. Thank you for that, David. So we're starting to see you know, the, the glimmer at the end of the tunnel of some businesses going back to work. Obviously, some of them continue to manufacture, provide services more are coming back to work now. What do you see as the main challenges they face as they start to try and get kickstart their businesses again? Um, well, first of all, making people feel safe and secure. Um, you know, it, it's always about the individual at work. It's, it's that, that they are really important and you need to look after them. Um, and you need to make sure that they feel that they're, they're in a safe working environment. I, I, I think that that implies probably that for a lot of office working 
where you're you're you've got lots of office lots of people crammed into a single office it's probably going to be a bit of a thing of the past so um that's that's one thing um in terms of um you know one of my companies um crfs we produced more uh, equipment i think in march uh, than we've ever produced in our entire single month in our entire lifetime um but we did that by working 24 7 and shift work and having extreme um arrangements inside the production facility for, for doing it so you you can you can do this stuff um and um we've had no cases as far as i'm aware so we're we we were very pleased with that um so we need to be creative about the way in which we think about doing things and just don't <laughs> it's a truism but but things aren't going to be the same um and it's that flexibility and agility and, and the ability to recognize that you need to have very different ways of working in the future fantastic david we've covered a, a broad range of topics in a very short time I, I greatly appreciate your words of wisdom and your insight into these and uh, perhaps when we're a bit further down the line i'd welcome you to come back and uh, give us an update on how your business is going yeah, thank you very much, John. I mean, the, um, the the one thing I will say, just I've got a restaurant down in London, and um, fortunately, we we decided ahead of this that we would build up quite a big cash buffer, and the result of that is that w we can we've 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 closed down. We will be amongst the few restaurants surviving in London. So um, uh, we we've been quite fortunate in that. There are a lot of other places that that have not been so fortunate. And I think we are going to need to think very hard about how we help people um, get back into employment and get this economy back moving again. Um, right. It's not going to be easy. Cash is king has been a long standing motto, which is going to carry on. Yep, cash, cash definitely is king. And not borrowed cash, cash you've got already. David, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thank you.